Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of this year's Singfeld Cup. We said that uh, depending on how it all goes, it will be either Yanni Pomnoshi or Alireza Firuja who will uh, take it all. Uh, Alireza already won the entire Grand Chester, now it was only a matter of who will actually win the Singfeld Cup. And this is a moment from the game uh, Nepo had against uh, uh, Hans Niemann uh, in round 9 and this was the position, uh, the critical one where Nepo wielding the white pieces could have captured an h6, created a passed h-pawn and this would have been winning for him. However, he didn't go for this. He uh, tried uh, tried something uh, something else. For example, after rook to a4 by Niemann, he didn't capture the pawn. He played a3, and uh, very, very quickly, the position uh, un unfolded into a draw. A f5, rook to c3, king to e7, and now rook to b8. Again, not going after the pawn. Uh, Nepo said that uh, he just thought that his position was completely winning, uh, that he could capture this pawn whenever he wanted. Uh, but after after rook to a6, now uh, once the bishop moves, also the pawn will be protected. There is no good way to do this. Also, rook to b6 check is the threat of um, uh, trading rooks and undoubling black pawns. So king c2, rook to b6, rook to a8, and now rook a6 again defending the pawn. Uh, there is no good way to... Um, uh, to, to, to go after it. If you now play rook to h8, uh, sorry, if you go rook to h8, just bishop to d7, the rook from a6 nicely guards the h6 pawn. So uh, Nepo was very, very unhappy about how he uh, handled this uh, this game, uh, but okay, still he went into the playoff against Alireza Firuja, and now we are going to discuss what happened in that game. That is, of course, a rapid game, and... Uh, uh, first game between the two of them ended in a draw, and basically this game, whoever wins it, wins the entire Singfield Cup. Uh, so let's see how it went. Alireza has the white pieces, and he opens with c4, uh, uh, going for the English. Uh, knight to f6, g3, and e5. We have bishop to g2 and pawn to c6, preparing to strike in the center with d5. And now uh, you could prevent this by going e4, uh, but now knight to f3, inviting Nepo for the early e4. We have e4, knight to d4, and now pawn to d5. So we already had this line, but uh, here Alireza will take a bit of a different turn. C captures queen captures and now as the knight is attacked we had a game uh, where knight to c2 knight to c3 was played but here alireza just defends the knight with e3 uh, we have knight to a6 and now pawn to d3 of course uh, now attacking the pinned pawn uh, bishop to b4 check knight to c3 and now captures captures and knight to c5 putting pressure on the d3 pawn and uh, usually d captures and e4 is played here but uh, here uh, alireza plays c4 and it is now a new move so already as of move 11, we have a completely new game. Uh, so Nepo goes uh, back with the queen, queen e5. Also, the knight can't really move as uh, the rook on a1 would hang. So d captures on e4, knight c captures on e4, and here uh, just castles. We have pawn to c5, uh, chasing away the knight, and now you have to go back to b3 to defend the rook. You, you could also maybe throw in a rook to e1. Uh, it is possible, although you don't really gain anything. Of course, uh, uh, Nepo will not capture and allow the e-file to open up. He's just going to castle, and then you're going to play knight to b3. So uh, it's uh, it, it's all the same. So knight to b3 right away. We have castles, and now pawn to f3, kicking away the knight. Knight to d6 and e4. And here we reach the spectacular moment uh, of the game uh, that, uh, well, it is just amazing that, uh, that the you know, the events of, the, uh, of this, uh, tournament unfold in such a way. Uh, Alireza is now threatening pawn to f4, you chase away the queen, and then pawn to e5, that will win one of the knights. So of course, Nepo sees this, and he moves the queen. He doesn't want to uh, have f4 to, to come with tempo, uh, but uh, the uh, you know uh, reality of the matter is that it doesn't matter. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and win this game for Alireza uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the e5 move has to be played right away. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is of course pawn to e5. It doesn't matter that f4 uh, it hasn't been played. Uh, the point is that if queen now captures an e5, just bishop f4. Nepo blunders the knight here and there is nothing uh, he can do about this. There is no good move here if uh, queen f5 just bishop captures or even queen captures, you are down a full piece. So Nepo tried to complicate things. He played knight captures and c4 
uh, e captures on f6, queen captures, and now queen to d5. All it is that goes after the c5 pawn. So bishop to e6 defending the knight and queen captures on c5. So uh, and now Nepo has a, a pawn for a piece and that's not all that great, especially if you're playing against Alireza. Uh, but uh, there's nothing else to do. He can resign or he can maybe try uh, and hope for a miracle. h6, we have pawn to f4, rook a to d8, and now pawn to f5. Chasing away the bishop so he can capture the knight. So b6 here, queen to c7, and rook to c8, defending the, the knight on c4. So queen f4, and now bishop to d7, and now just queen to d4. So this is how Alireza uh, forces a queen trade as the bishop is hanging. And if you play something like queen e7, queen to d8, those are all very, very passive moves. The rook will just um, uh, go uh, continue harassing the queen. Uh, the, the, there's no good way to play this. So here, queen captures on d4, uh, grabbing the queen, knight captures, and now rook uh, f to d8. Uh, uh, still continuing the game, bishop to f4, and now bishop to a4, putting pressure on the knight, stopping rook to d1, so knight to f3, uh, and now bishop to c2, attacking the f5 pawn, we have g4 defending it, and knight to b2, there is nothing Nepo can try here, basically he's hoping for a miracle, knight e5, we have bishop back to a4, and now rook a to c1, Alireza just forces further trades, as he is so much up in material, any trade is good for him, so rook captures, rook captures, we have pawn to f6, and now knight to g6, we have knight to d3 attacking the rook, and rook to c7, and he was in this position, on move 34, that Yanni Pomnishi resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So as Jan said, a uh, very, very sad uh, end to a very sad tournament. First, not taking his chances against uh, Hans Niemann here, where he could have just um, captured the, the, the pawn and it's basically game over. Uh, and against Alireza, just blundering a piece like that, not characteristic of a, of a former 2800 player and a former World Chess Championship challenger. Uh, but what are you, you going to do? Uh, and in the current uh, World Chess Championship challenger. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Big congratulations to Alireza on not only winning the Singfeld Cup, but also the entire Grand Chess Tour. If you guys are interested, these are the uh, final standings of the of the Grand Chess Tour. You can see that... Uh, uh, let me just... Uh, all right, let's just make that a little bit smaller uh, you, uh, so you can see the bonuses as well. Uh, so Alireza wins the entire Grand Chess Tour, winning uh, $172,000 plus a $100,000 bonus. Wesley So in second place with $140,000 plus $50,000 bonus. And Maxime Vacher Lagrave uh, in third place, also $140,000 with $25,000 bonus and so on. Fabi in fourth, Levon in fifth, Jan Pomnesci in sixth. Uh, seven is Linear Dominguez, Shahri Mamidyarov uh, in eighth, and nine is Richard Rapport. So truly, truly incredible stuff. Uh, there you have it. Big congratulations to Alireza once again. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's interesting that Alireza uh, also won the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz event before going into this. So he just really, really played incredible chess and he just uh, obliterated everyone. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it and this short coverage uh, of the of, of the Singfield Cup. We're going to cover some other events that took place while this was happening. And there are some fun games that happened. Like, I don't know if you've seen the... Uh, the 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 famous castles fork. Uh, it's incredible that such a thing happened in in a game between two grandmasters. But I, I will probably cover that game as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, another casual coder, David Kimura, uh, John Gear Law Office, and Abdul Rahman Al Saud for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, to check out on whatever else is happening in the chess world and on your wonderful suggestions so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and i will keep you informed if we know anything more about the whole magnus situation uh, see you soon